the tenant farmer on the estate had concerns about flooding to agricultural ground, sediment build-up, um, affecting drainage, because this situation had evolved over the years. So the estate contacted SEPA to discuss dredging of the river. Uh, they were worried about flood risk. So SEPA came out and did an assessment. Uh, and what we found was that the very steep upper catchment was generating a lot of sand and gravel. And because of the change in slope, a lot of that sand and gravel was depositing in the river. That deposition had actually been made a lot worse by historic modifications of the river. It had been straightened and flood banks had been built on either side. And by containing the river, that meant there was not as much space for the sand and gravel to deposit, so it would build up quite quickly in the river. The nearest thing I could liken it to was a, was a log flume, very heavily armoured either side. So you had a very straight channel, no diversity, a fairly even depth all the way through. It wasn't optimum for not just aquatic life, but um, your bird life and all your other biodiversity that exists round about a river. By opening up the river, removing the straightening and the embankments, so re-meandering the river, uh, that would create a lot more space for the deposition of the gravel, but that would also significantly improve the river habitats and the ecology of the river. We explicitly adopted a process-based approach, uh, which we do in all projects. We try and reinstate natural river process, and in this case it was moving embankments, realigning a section of the river and adding in a, a fairly large amount of large wood structures, which had a, a, a very great benefit in the evolution of the channel. We ran a sediment transport or morphodynamic model to ensure that our designs were appropriate given the amount of uh, bed load transport there was and that was a crucial aspect. It was really important to include that in our, in our design process because of that level of sediment that's moving through the system. And you can see how the channel uh, has developed uh, very quickly over a number of relatively small flood events. The evolution has been quite rapid in, in the realigned channel but also in these wetland areas. These wetland areas have really developed uh, and there's been significant uh, ecological a response to that in terms of uh, fish and invertebrates, have, uh, it's, it's very noticeable how that's improved uh, compared to pre-restoration conditions. The first um, thing we've seen after a survey last year when the channel had been in place for six months or so was a, a quite a nice improvement in the numbers of fry. There had been a good spawning uh, in the first season and the numbers of salmon and trout fry were very good the following year. An added advantage of this process uh, of, of the design was that uh, we dropped the channel to lower elevation relative to the previous channel, which meant that agricultural field drains had greater fall, which meant they are much more functional now than they had been in the past. The construction of our Radar River project was a huge success, mainly due to the environmental ethos and the collaborative team effort of all parties. All teams collectively adopted quite a flexible field fitting delivery which was really environmentally sensitive and really exceeded all expectations.